Hello everyone, I'm Abram Douglas, a solutions architect specializing in identity, and today I'm going to talk about SAML Federation with an Amazon Cognito user pool and introduce some new SAML features. Amazon Cognito is a developer-centric and cost-effective customer identity and access management service. It provides a secure identity store and supports federation with SAML, OpenID Connect, and social identity providers. This enables you to add secure authentication to your customer-facing applications that can scale to millions of users. Amazon Cognito offers various security features to protect your customers and business, such as MFA, account verification, and advanced security features, including a compromised credential check and adaptive authentication based on risk scoring. It supports various compliance standards and frameworks, operates on open identity standards, and integrates with an extended ecosystem of front-end and back-end development resources and SDK libraries. Today, I'll talk about what SAML Federation is, the benefits of it, and introduce some new SAML features for Amazon Cognito, including IDP-initiated login, encrypted SAML responses, and signed SAML sign-in requests. I'll also provide two demos where I walk through configuring SAML Federation between an existing Amazon Cognito user pool and a third-party identity provider. Before we walk through configuring a SAML identity provider with Amazon Cognito, let's first understand what SAML Federation is and the benefits of it. At a high level, Identity Federation is a system of trust established between two parties for the purpose of authenticating users and conveying information needed to authorize their access to resources. SAML stands for Security Assertion Markup Language, which is an XML-based communication protocol between service providers and identity providers. It allows different organizations to securely share identity and authentication information across corporate boundaries. For example, an identity provider is responsible for user authentication, and a service provider, such as an application, controls access to resources. After successful authentication, the identity provider sends the service provider a message, called an assertion. The assertion contains the user's account name and other attribute data that the service provider uses to help determine the scope of access that the service provider should grant. So why use SAML Federation? With Federation, you can improve the user experience by providing a more seamless experience to multiple applications without having to repeatedly enter credentials. This can lead to users having a single sign-on experience. Security posture can also be improved with Federation, as identity management and certain amounts of coarse grain access management can be managed by the identity provider. Federation also helps reduce password fatigue by the user. With SAML being an open standard, organizations can leverage the interoperability of SAML across environments, systems, and applications. Another benefit could be the reduction of administrative overhead as certain elements of user lifecycle management are centralized and owned by the identity provider. Organizations that provide business-to-business -business and or SaaS services would greatly benefit from identity federation, as this would allow their customers to access SaaS services using the existing identity provider the customer currently uses. In certain scenarios, this may also provide a single sign-on experience for users who are able to log into business-to-business -business applications that leverage identity federation. Let's quickly walk through a high-level example of what a SAML federated login would look like. An end user interacting with a client, such as a mobile application or a web app using a browser, would begin their authentication flow against a Cognito user pool. In this example, the user's account is managed by a third-party SAML identity provider that has been integrated with a Cognito user pool, and therefore the user will be redirected accordingly. After successful authentication with the identity provider, a SAML assertion will be returned to the Cognito user pool's SAML IDP endpoint. Upon validation of the received assertion, the Cognito user pool will issue JSON web tokens to the client. The client on behalf of the user will be able to use these tokens to access resources. For example, the application might display the user's first name, which can be obtained from the ID token, and the access token can be used for coarse grain authorization against downstream backend services. As an example, the serverless architecture displayed here is using a microservices backend to protect access to data. This could be something like an Amazon API gateway using a Cognito authorizer, or AWS AppSync using the issued access token to protect the GraphQL API endpoint. If this was a business-to-business -business use case, you would be able to integrate additional third-party SAML IDPs, which could represent distinct tenants. This allows you to scale your SaaS solution using the Amazon Cognito user pool as an authentication abstraction layer and therefore your application or suite of applications only has to integrate with your Cognito user pool. Just before I walk through the demos, I would like to introduce three new SAML features to Amazon Cognito. Support for Identity Provider Initiated Login, also known as IDP Initiated Login. With this feature, your Cognito user pool can accept unsolicited SAML assertions from your identity provider. 
This can improve the user experience of federated users. However, make sure this is aligned with your organization's security posture. It's important to note that as a security best practice, you should consider only allowing service provider initiated SAML sign-in requests. This is when a sign-in request is initiated from your Amazon Cognito user pool before you accept an assertion. Next, Amazon Cognito now supports encrypted SAML responses. If you require encrypted responses, your identity provider must encrypt all SAML assertions with a public key that is provided by your Cognito user pool. And the third new SAML feature is support for signed SAML sign-in requests. With this feature, your identity provider can verify that a sign-in request has the expected signature from your Amazon Cognito user pool. Now that we have a high-level understanding of what Amazon Cognito is and what is SAML Federation, let's see it in action. For both demos, I will be using an existing Amazon Cognito user pool. Therefore, I know the Assertion Consumer Service URL, also known as the ACS URL. This is the endpoint of your Cognito user pool that will receive the SAML response from your identity provider. I also will know the audience URI of the user pool, also known as Entity ID. This indicates the intended recipient and audience for the SAML assertion. Both of these values will be needed when integrating with a third-party SAML IDP. After successful authentication with a configured SAML identity provider, your Amazon Cognito user pool will read the claims within the SAML assertion to create a user profile in the user pool just in time, and it will map any attributes you have configured. Up first, we'll use AWS IAM Identity Center as the identity provider, and we'll configure this to allow IDP initiated login within Amazon Cognito. Within the AWS console, navigate to IAM Identity Center and select Applications. Click on Add Application. Select the I have an application I want to set up option and select SAML 2.0. Here, we want to provide a friendly display name for the application and a description. Scrolling down, we want to either download the metadata file or take note of the metadata URL. We will need this in the Amazon Cognito user pool. Next, we want to provide a relay state for our application. Since we're going to support IDP initiated login, we want to provide a relay state in order to indicate how to handle subsequent interactions between the identity provider and the service provider. Generally speaking, the relay state will depend on the identity provider, the service provider, and the requirements of your application. The last step for this part is to provide the ACS URL and the audience URI from our existing Cognito user pool. Next, let's configure the attribute mapping. For this demo, our Cognito user pool requires email and given name attributes. We'll see these values mapped to Amazon Cognito attributes shortly. Save your changes. The very last step here is to grant access to our application. Alice happens to be the only user and we're going to grant them access to the application. Now let's add this identity provider to our Amazon Cognito user pool. Still within the AWS console, let's navigate to Amazon Cognito and select your user pool. Select the Sign In Experience tab and click the Add Identity Provider button. Select the SAML option. We're going to provide a friendly name for our identity provider. Identifiers and sign out flow are optional and we'll skip these for now. For IDP initiated SAML sign in, we're going to select the option Accept SP initiated and IDP initiated SAML assertions. After doing so, you'll see a notification informing you you can add other SAML identity providers to an app client that accepts a SAML provider with IDP initiated sign in. Next, we'll need to provide the metadata for the identity provider. We previously copied the metadata URL, so we'll paste that here. Lastly, we want to configure the attribute mapping between the identity provider and the Cognito user pool. For this user pool, the given name and email attributes are required. Therefore, we want those attributes to be mapped from the SAML assertion. You can also map additional attributes contained within the SAML assertion that are not necessarily required. To finish up things here, let's go ahead and click Add Identity Provider. Now that we've added the new SAML identity provider, Let's update the existing app client so we can use this identity provider. Let's navigate to the app integration tab and scroll down to the existing app client. This happens to be an application running locally for testing purposes and is currently configured to only use a local Cognito users. So we're going to remove the user pool as the identity provider and add our new identity provider. We're not going to change anything else with the existing app client. So let's scroll down to the bottom and click save changes. Before we sign into our application, Let's look at the Users tab and notice there aren't any users. 
With Federation, the user profile is created just in time as Cognito receives a valid SAML assertion, and the attributes we mapped will be updated during the initial and subsequent Federated sign-ins. We'll come back and check out the Users tab again after the Federated login happens. Let's jump over to the demo application. The demo application is running locally and using Express.js to handle the backend components. Navigating to the web application, there's no presence of valid tokens. Therefore, I'm identified as a guest. After clicking login, I'm immediately redirected to the identity provider, in this case, AWS IAM Identity Center. If you remember earlier, we granted access to this application to Alice earlier. So let's log in as them. That's it, we're signed in as Alice. The web app is simply obtaining the given name of the user from the ID token and displaying it dynamically. We just experienced a service provider initiated login. Ultimately, we were redirected to the identity provider to authenticate after clicking login. After we successfully logged in, a SAML assertion was sent to the Cognito user pool. Then an authorization code was delivered back to the client. Lastly, the backend of the application exchanged the authorization code for Cognito tokens. We essentially used an OAuth 2.0 authorization code grant. Let's go ahead and clear all cache and cookies entirely. And this time let's perform an identity provider initiated login. We're gonna to navigate to our AWS access portal URL and log in as Alice. Currently we only have access to the Cognito demo app. So let's click on the app tile and access our application. And that's it, we're signed in. We authenticated using both SP initiated and IDP initiated login flows. Before we move on to the second demo, let's quickly check out the user pool and notice the user profile for Alice was created just in time and both the email and first name attributes were mapped from the SAML assertion. For the second demo, we'll be using ping one from ping identity as the identity provider and we'll configure this to use SAML encryption and sign SAML sign in requests. Within ping one, we'll start by selecting the correct environment and navigating to the application section to add a new application. Let's give our app a friendly name and select SAML application. We're going to manually provide our ACS URL and our entity ID from our Amazon Cognito user pool. After entering, click save. Next, we're gonna enable the application by toggling this switch, and we're gonna set our subject name ID format. This will vary based on the identity provider you're using. Next, we're gonna set up the attributes we want to send in the assertion to the Cognito user pool. Just before we jump over to the Cognito user pool, let's make sure we grab the IDP metadata URL. Back in the AWS console within our existing user pool, navigate to the sign in tab, click add identity provider. We're going to select the SAML option. Let's add a friendly provider name and skip down to providing our metadata URL we obtained from the identity provider. For this identity provider, we're going to activate the signed SAML sign in request and encrypted SAML assertions. For the last step, we'll configure the attribute mapping between the identity provider and the Cognito user pool. At the end, click Add Identity Provider. Now let's obtain both the signing and encryption certificates by selecting the identity provider we just added and downloading each respective certificate. We'll need both of these certificates for the identity provider. One last thing we'll do before updating our identity provider with our certificates Let's head back to the existing app client and update it to use the newly added identity provider. Let's jump back over to the identity provider. Since we're wanting both encrypted SAML assertions and signed SAML sign-in requests, we need to provide those certificates to the identity provider. Back within the application, let's update our settings and provide the encryption certificate and the signing certificate. Now, back to our locally running application, let's test our new federated identity provider. Since there's no presence of valid tokens, we're identified as a guest. Let's go ahead and click login, and we'll be immediately redirected to the identity provider, in this case, ping one from ping identity. Our user from this identity provider happens to be Bob, so we'll log in as Bob. And that's it, we're signed in as Bob. Again, the web app is simply obtaining the given name from the user from the ID token. Off to the side, I was capturing the traffic with the web browser dev tools. And here's what the SAML assertion looks like, all encrypted. So in closing, we learned what is Amazon Cognito, what is SAML Federation and the benefits of it, 
Henry introduced new SAML features, including IDP initiated login support, encrypted SAML assertions, and signed SAML sign-in requests. And lastly, we configured two different SAML identity providers to use the new SAML features and experience federated sign-ins. To learn more about Amazon Cognito, visit the service page at aws.amazon.com forward slash cognito.